Hey folks, welcome back. I'm going to bring you along on this uh, 1938 John Deere Model AR tractor. We're going to remove in the cylinder head. Um, this thing starts and runs uh, perfect. Now I've had the cylinder head off before. Um, we re it replaced the uh, head gasket because that's what I was thinking. What we've got going on is we've got coolant leaking down into the uh, oil. And so uh, I replaced the head gasket before because I pulled the head off and um, we looked over it and all that stuff. Couldn't figure out, you know, anything was looking bad on it. And so we replaced the head gasket and we still got the same issue. So I'm going to bring you along with uh, pulling this head off. It's really not uh, too difficult. There's a couple things you're going to get uh, snagged with um, that I can help you out with since we took this one apart. And... Um, so anyways, um, I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step exactly, but, you know, the first thing you got to do is, is get these two bolts off of here. That's going to remove your valve cover. Uh, get these bolts off of here to remove the exhaust. Uh, you'll have to get this hose off of here. This is a fairly new hose, so it will flex enough to be able to get it off of there. It's your lower radiator hose. Um, depending on... on any of this and whether it's been done and, and what your tractor's like um, is going to determine like how hard or difficult this is going to be. Okay, you got a bolt here and another bolt directly on the opposite side of it to uh, get this um, intake my manifold basically off of here. Um, the one thing that uh, this thing had before was it had studs in here, which if you've got studs in here, then you can't lift this out of here because you've got this shaft for the fan. Uh, you've got this intake, you know, from your from your air filter, all in the way. You've also got a your upper radiator hose coming down. All that stuff's in the way here, as far as being able to get this uh, this piece off of here. Um, instead of disassembling all of that and um, cause that shaft was going to be the one that was going to be the hardest thing to get out of there. Um, I just took and cut the studs off here, just took a little air Dremel deal and I just cut the studs off here and replaced them with bolts. Um, I think on this side back here, I had to lift this up a little bit and cut them just about flush, you know, um, loosen them obviously. But uh, yeah, that made this e where I could slide this out and then um, this head will finagle its way out. I believe it was on this side. I'll have to, it's been a while since I did it, but um, anywho, that's uh, what we're gonna get all started with. So I'm gonna get all that stuff uh, disassembled um, and we'll keep on going. Okay, as I go along here, I'll probably try to give a little tips and stuff that kind of help make certain things easier. The bolt on the back side of here, uh, it's just a little guy right here. Uh, it's a little hard to get to. Um, and I always do it something like that first. Um, I do it on starters and stuff too. Um, and leave this one tight because if you take this one out first, and then as soon as you loosen this, this whole thing is going to kind of want to move and it could settle down and then now you can't get this out finger tight so if you are out you know with just your finger so once you get this bolt loosened if this one's still tight you can spin this out with your fingers and boom you got it and then this one's a lot easier to get to if this does settle down a little bit um you can get it out a lot easier so anyway it's just a little trick all right here's the exhaust coming out now i'm not an expert on this and I don't really know if this is how it's supposed to be um, if it comes supposed to come out that easy but it always has the uh, couple of times I've had this apart and so I don't know um, this was actually a gasket here that I had made so this gasket you know was in here fell out of there before when I pulled the bolts out um, you can buy this at at Napa auto parts whatever it just comes in a big sheet and uh, I just measured it all out and uh, made this and uh, apparently it's been uh, working pretty good so anyways um, now we're ready to get the bolts off of here these there's four of them 
And like if yours got studs, you're gonna have a little bit harder time, but you can remove this. We're not gonna need to, but if you need to remove this, this comes out fairly easy, um, which is these four bolts here. Uh, this is the temperature sender for the gauge up there. Um, it had one in it. This just I had just replaced this. So, um, anyways, yeah, that's what's next. And then um, after that, we'll get the valve cover off, get the uh, valve train off of here, and then we'll go to the head. So, okay, so that deal just kind of slips out that side. Um, like I said, if yours has got studs, you can have a little bit more work to do. Now, let me take a little bit of time to um, explain why I did what I did and, um, you know, give you some tips or whatever. This, this like I said, comes off uh, fairly easy. It'll just, with these four bolts, this will just come out of here this way. There's nothing in the way here. So um, when getting this shaft out of here, uh, there's three bolts here. You undo those and undo this. This could actually go with the shaft too if you don't have your, your wires in it. At the time I didn't have them in there. And um, undo these bolts here. I also did undo these bolts here. This would not go far enough forward to get the shaft out of here. And so I was kind of stuck between having to remove, you know, all of this up here, the fuel tank, and then having to remove the radiator, which this is a very, very heavy radiator. Um, I have had this radiator off for other reasons prior to doing this. This is a couple of years going on with this uh, project here. Um, so anyways, that's why I elected to cut the studs off and put regular bolts in here so that I can get this off because at the time I didn't want to do you know any of that other repair and I thought this was simple enough um we're not dealing with like head gaskets you know like nowadays they put as an example they put uh head studs are stronger in the six liter power strokes for the head bolts you know instead of head bolts they put head studs and all of this we're not talking about needing like that much uh torque on something like this it's just the way it was designed um for whatever reason um it works just fine with the bolts um like I said, I've had this thing running for quite a while. So anyways, that's why I elected to do that. And just to, just to let you know that, yeah, some of this stuff, you know, for some reason, uh, I just could not get this thing forward enough to get the gear out of here to, for this shaft and this whole fan deal to come out. Had that have been able to happen, uh, then we would have just had probably just this to be in the way, and that could come out pretty easily. Um, I've also had that out before. And then this would have lifted up enough to be able to get the that off there without having to cut the studs. But anyways, that's why it is what it is. So now I've got these uh, bolts off of here to uh, remove the valve cover. And I kind of try to put everything sort of in order about how I, I took it off. You know, there's the two bolts there that hold the valve cover on there. Stick the valve cover there. Stick the bolts here that do the valve train. Stick the valve trains there. And then uh, find a place for our push rods. I'll show you that. So, um, yeah, let's just keep on going. So now what we got to do is we got kind of a double nut system going on here. Uh, we got these these two right here and then this whole valve train will just kind of slide off of there and then uh, there's a trick with the uh, push rods that i will show you so once i get to that point okay once you get these bolts out or these nuts off here uh, you can see they're kind of these are the outer ones they're just kind of a jam nut you can see they're kind of beveled kind of in the shape of a lug nut per se so anyways there's that um, and then this whole valve train right here will just come off just like so and that's not too bad so now um, <clears throat> the trick with the uh, push rods is right now you can pull out these outer ones okay in there. 
got this one. Pull it out. But you can't get these out. But what you can do is keep them in like this. And then we well, still got to get this hose off of here yet. Um, is when the, you slide this thing forward, this head forward enough, these can go it right up in, inside of here. Then you can get these out. Going back together, do not forget these because I did that the first time. I did one of these on this tractor actually, but this is the only one of these I've ever worked on. Um, but I've worked on it quite a bit. I wish I would have done a lot more filming on, on different things, but uh, I didn't do much with YouTube then. So anyways, uh, yeah, when you put these, like I said, these will not come out of there, but you can get this thing to slide forward. And then once it slides forward, then you can go ahead and get them out. It's just when you're going back in with the head, you know, you're going to set it back down in here and you're going to slide the new push rods or the not new, but I mean, you slide the push rods back in and then line them up. You know, but I had this thing all torqued down and all that kind of stuff. Went to go put the push rods in there, found out I couldn't get these in. So watch for that. Um, here's your head bolts. You can see there's uh, four across the top. We've got one right here. And then we've got four across the bottom here. So there's four, eight, nine of them, I think. Yeah. Like there's nine of them. They're like a inch and a sixteenth or whatever uh, socket to get them off. So um, here's our old cork gasket. You can buy all the gasket kits and all that stuff online for these these things. So anyways, looks like I got a little bit heavy with the silicone on the last one. That's not good. So anyways, yeah, we'll keep on going. Okay, one thing I did do before um, taking this head off of here um, was I realized that there was a little bit of, there was coolant still in here. And if I recalled correctly, um, you could fill it up to a certain amount. And I don't even remember when that was. I did have this off of here before and it wouldn't leak. And so I decided I'd go ahead and fill it up to the, you know, very top what I did is I just started filling it up and I noticed it coming out of this hole right here. So this is where we're going to concentrate on the coolants. Just, I mean, it just, it just trickles out of there. I was, I thought I was filming that, but I wasn't. Um, but it was right out of this, uh, push rod deal. So the coolant would leak down and then, um, right here in the bottom, you see that hole right there. That's where all the oil from that gets, oiled your valves and stuff like that's where it goes back down into the crankcase so anyways um this is where we concentrate on on our leak and figure out you know what's going on there so anyways let's get this head off and, and then i got the rest of the coolant drained out of here so i thought i had all of it drained out of here but since i had some in there i thought I'd just fill up with water and and keep on going so Okay, so with the head slid forward now, you can see how we can get these uh, push rods to come out of here. Oops, I wasn't aiming the camera at that time. Just to make sure that you uh, put them back in before you go. And yeah, your head gasket you know, obviously this one was a new one, but not anymore. So we'll have to uh, get another one of that. These are pretty readily available, um, you know. But anyhow, now we're going to snake this thing out of here and slide it back just a little bit. And then it kind of finagles out of here on this side, I believe. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have found the issue. So remember, this is the... These are the two holes that the uh, inner uh, push rods went through. And you can see, you know, like this is a uh, coolant, you know, there's coolant all in, in here. And you can see how that tube goes through right there. Well, if you look on this side, 
I don't know how well that's going to show up. It's really pitted. So let me, uh, I got this in stuffed, a rag stuffed in here just to not let any light in here. But I'm really hoping that this will show up. But as you can see, turn the light on and off. Lights reflecting off of the rag. There, see? That is our issue, and that's why when this thing was on the other side, it was leaking coolant out of this deal. Now, this looks like it's kind of a tube that's kind of pressed in there, so I'm hoping maybe you take this over to a machine shop. Maybe they can press in a new tube or do something with it. I don't know. I'm not an expert on what machine shops can do and what they can't do, so anyways, um, found the problem. Uh, a lot of times, you know, when I was first looking at this, you know, I was looking at surfaces, you know, I had all this all cleaned up. I was looking at all this, thinking maybe there was a crack here, trying to look at the head gasket because, you know, obviously if you have a bad head gasket, you can leak coolant from this point, you know, right straight into here. And that'll, um, you know, here's where your bolts go through uh, for your head, head studs or whatever. Um, but yeah, you can get oil or coolant leaking or oil, you know, back and forth, you know, either or. But uh, it wasn't a head gasket in our case. It was that that uh, this deal tube pitted and whatnot. So anyways, we're going to get this repaired and then uh, we'll put it back together and find out uh, if that works. It should. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and upload this video as a part one. Um, we will uh, get all this cleaned up, get, take the cylinder head in and get hopefully get repaired. Um, and then after that, we're going to make a video right here showing how to start it. This is a complete hand crank deal. Um, you can kind of see how these pistons work a little bit they're kind of opposing i guess it's a little dark in there get some light just like that and uh you don't have to you don't have to worry about timing or anything like that all that stuff's done elsewhere there's not these are about the simplest things you'll ever run across so um, simplest things made of cast iron, so it'll last forever. So anyways, uh, yeah, keep in touch or keep in tune for the follow-up video. We'll put it all back together, show you how to get started and everything. So anyways, thanks for watching.